seeking to find your specialty area. So you've got cognitive impairments, and that encompasses all different kinds of kids. There are kids that are a little bit cognitively impaired, mildly, some that are moderately, the ones at Pine Grove are severely cognitively impaired. Um, and there's multiply impaired that have the physical and the cognitive impairment. That one endorsement, that one certification, that CI encompasses all of those different kinds of kids. And what I, what I find with a lot of the student teachers we have at Pine Grove um, is they walk into Pine Grove, the severely cognitively impaired center, and they didn't really know that that was there. I would suggest to you, as I go through the different kinds of teachers, and if you're seeking to be a special ed teacher, you get out to some of the different classrooms. Grand Rapids is a great place to go because they have, all of the classrooms are pretty centrally located within Grand Rapids Public Schools. If you live in a uh, school district um, that's smaller, you might have a learning disabilities classroom. But I would, I would if you haven't had experience within the um, special ed classrooms, I would get out because each of these kids, each of the different certifications you can get as a special ed teacher, all the, each of them are a little bit different, and you might find you like one better than the other. Another teacher uh, certification you could get would be early childhood um, de developmental delay. That's our preschool. P it used to be called PCI, but it's, um, so in Grand Rapids, there are center programs that draw from all over the county, and those are two-year-olds. They have an infant parent program. They need teachers in all of those programs and then they take them through five. So these are usually two to five, and they do have some infant parent programs that they use early childhood teachers. Um, there's a certification of emotional, having or teaching students with emotional impairments. I'm trying to change what typically we've always said, teacher, um, I'm trying to I think how we said it before. We said emotionally impaired. We're trying to change some of that grammar to be, you're a teacher of students with emotional impairments. You're a teacher of students with cognitive impairments. Um, Grand Rapids Public Schools runs the center programs for students with emotional impairments. They, again, come from all over the county. Whenever I make reference to center programs, it means that the kids are drawn from county. And so Ingham County will have center programs. Muskegon County has center programs. Um, but then there are also students with emotional impairments in the local school districts too. They may not be as severe. In order to teach according to Michigan rules, in order to teach children with emotional impairments, you have to have that certification. Um, there are others. There's a teacher of students with hearing impairments, visual impairments, physical impairments, and learning disabilities. Those are the primary categories, the primary certifications that you would get as a special education teacher. Usually the college and universities have, have you pick out two. Um, I started out with um, my CI, Cognitive Impairment Certification, and um, my POHI at the time, my Physical Impairment, and then I went and got my Learning Disabilities Certification after that. And then a master's early childhood so that you ha you can you have it gives you more flexibility the more different certifications the highest need areas in any school district right now um, is going to be the learning disabilities emotional impairment certification those are what schools are seeking I know Grand Rapids still looking for teachers with certification in cognitive impairments and emotional impairments um, there's a couple down here at the bottom. That is, these aren't teaching certifications, but these are a few of the, a couple of the jobs that exist within school districts on a smaller basis. Um, there's orientation and mobility specialists, and they work with visually impaired students, and they give them kind of the lay of the land. They teach them to use their cane. They teach them to get around the community. And we also have music therapists that work within all of the programs, and that, again, is another kind of training. It's not a teacher certification. These aren't, but these are specific um, trainings for people that work within special ed. 
one of the biggest um, areas of growth, one of the largest areas of growth we're, growth we're seeing right now is um, students with autism spectrum disorder. Um, I bet you we have, in the last four years, doubled our classrooms in, in the center program, but I know that the locals, the, the, the autism classrooms within the regular schools are, are growing as well. This is a different kind of certifications. With the rest of the certifications that I went over, you enter the college or university, you take the coursework, and you do the practicum or the student teaching, you gain the certification. With, with a certification in autism spectrum disorder, you have to first hold a special ed teacher degree. So you first have to go through a program and get a certification. After that's accomplished, you go online to the ACE program. And I have um, the website there. It's www.mivu.org. Then it goes on and on, but that'll get you the basic. And it's the Autism Spectrum Disorder Certification is an online certification. You um, will take six classes and have a partnering university for the practicum. There are um, the participating universities locally are Oakland, Grand Valley, Central, and Northern. So it's above and beyond your bachelor's. It's an extra certification. I know um, there is a very high need for teachers that have certification to work with students with autism spectrum disorder. Um, we are just not finding them. It's a, it's a fairly new, and the state implemented this online course so that we could get those teachers. There is also um, a very much a shortage in um, teachers of students with visual impairments and hearing impairments across the state. And primarily that is because there's limited colleges and universities that will certify that anymore. I think you're gonna find Eastern might be one of the few that certify yet in um, visual impairments and hearing impairments. Um, now we'll go into some of the other bigger categories um, of, of opportunities within, under the umbrella of special education. If, if you think of yourself of, as being a person who has a heart for helping people and you're a good listener, um, you have a knowledge of your community and you're involved in your community, you work well on a team, you're, you tend to be calm when everything around you is stressful, um, you like to give people advice and to counsel, you have a great deal of patience and you like people, then um, oh, I had to do that because that's just a special out of me. <laughs> then social worker might be one of the fields or the areas that you may want to go into. Um, school social work has a broad range, as all of these do. But first of all, it requires um, a bachelor's with a master's work in social work, specifically. Um, it goes on that you have, to, you have to get a full approval as a school social worker through the Michigan Department of Ed, um, and you have to work with the school district to get that. So it's not just, again, teacher. For teacher certification, you go complete the requirements of the university, take the test, the state test, and you have certification to teach those students. Um, and you do have ongoing coursework that you have to take as a teacher. Um, a special education teacher, you do have ongoing coursework you have to take. And I did not look into how many credits it is, but there is ongoing coursework. Um, for social workers, you have to take a board of examiners test. You have to register with the state and um, achieve your limited master's of social works license to pro in, in order to process keep your licensure qualified. It's required for social workers to have a li this license at a minimum. But you have to work with the school district first. So the key to social work is you, you get your bachelor's, you get your master's in social work, and then you have to work with the school district to obtain the licensure of the um, limited master's in social work. So it's, a, it's an ongoing. And for social, social work, depending on the setting you're in, depending on the school, 
whether it's a center, whether you're in a regular elementary school, whether you're in a regular high school, um, you're going to help teachers with behavior problems in the classroom. That's going to be un fall under your duties. You're going to work with staff to help address needs that may arise in a home for a student and their families. There might be needs for um, assistance in parenting or even helping a family gain um, some of the resources for food and clothing. Social workers work pretty closely with families on that. Um, and you're going to work directly with a student or a group of students. You're going to serve on teams in the school building to, that deal with behavior and special ed qualifications. And you'll, you will deal with crisis situations, however they arise. And they do in, in any scope. It could be a specific crisis situation for a student in their home, or it could be a crisis situation that happens at the school. The schools in Michigan that work with the um, masters in social work are Michigan State, Western, U of M, Wayne State, Grand Valley, and Eastern. This job, so to speak, or this role within special ed, um, I need to put out there, because I put it out there on the presentation because this is a very important um, role in our building. But because it, could, it gives you something that you could do now if you wanted to get into special ed to just kind of get your way in. A water safety instructor or a lifeguard. Not very many pools are open right now, <laughs> but some are. I mean, some of the school districts still are, are maintaining their pools. Lincoln's pool is still open. Um, we have a pool at Pine Grove. It requires us to have a water safety instructor to work with the kids. It is a, what we call, a, it's like a para or non-certified job. Pine Grove, uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Development, or all the center programs have positions in them that you could go now and apply for and directly work hands-on with kids if you have, if you have like in the summer, we go through the summer, and, or you could sub on times when you're not having classes. Those are parapros and um, non-certified. Those are, we're, we're always seeking, I, I want to encourage you, if you need experience and you would like to see the range of what, especially the severe populations of special ed students, the ones with the most needs, um, those are the ones that have the most support from the non-certified staff. You can go to PESG, sign up as a sub, and we use subs all the time sub-teachers and substitute um, non-certified staff. It will get you in there and it will raise your awareness of that specific population. Um, but subbing in general in the school districts that you are interested in will help raise your awareness to what area of special ed. This WSI is one she, you, she went and um, achieved her certification from, I think at the time it was the Red Cross. But to be certified, she, you have to take your WSI class two weekends, or it, it's 16 consecutive weeks. And then you can teach water safety. The difference between a lifeguard and a water safety instructor is water safety instructor actually teaches swimming. Um, lifeguard has to stay on the deck of the pool. So if you have either, um, I know that for the center programs within Grand Rapids, they hire WSI, but um, other districts could be different. It could be just a lifeguard. Um, the downside of this, this is something kind of what you could do right now if you wanted to get in. The downside to looking as a career in this is that many of the pools are closing in today's financial climate. It's a little bit tougher to find jobs there. If you're the kind of person who's analytical, technical, curious about the brain, scientific and organized, but you're a good communicator and you like people, then um, speech path, or I'm, I'm, yeah, spe speech pathology is another role within special ed. It takes on many different, um, you, when, you, when you look at a speech path and you think of one, they have the private practices, they have um, clinical where they will, they'll work in the hospital and then they work in schools as well. And with us in the schools, they require, all speech path require a master's level program. You have 250 clinical hours. It's a pretty um, rigorous curriculum 
for speech pathology. But I have to tell you, it's also very much in need in Michigan right now. School districts are all, always yelling out for speech paths. Um, you have 250 clinical hours in, as an undergrad and another 350 clinical hours at the end of the grad level. Um, you have to take an exam and you have to work with a certified speech pathologist to get your C's in order to maintain your certification within the school district. You're defined a major and minor are communication disorders, educational psychology, and science. Your areas of focus in the educational setting, they'll vary. When you think of speech, you probably think of sitting down with a student and teaching them how to talk because they don't say their R's or they don't say their S's correctly. That's part of it for in some aspects of special ed. But the other part goes into helping people understand and helping a child understand what's being said, how to process something. When they're given a direction and they either don't comply or um, look very confused, it could be the processing of language. It could be syntax, how they speak, using pronouns correctly instead of saying, me want to go here, I want to go here. So it, it has to do with speech as well as just the processing of language and communication. In the sites that I work in, um, it's press, learning to press a switch using technology. This is another area where if you're a techie and you like all that stuff, iPads are huge, making huge growth in this with speech pathology because they, have, they teach kids to communicate. And so speech isn't just speech, it's the whole realm of speech and communication. A, a very high needs area in all of our special ed settings. Many kids will come in early on in the early childhood with just speech delays. So some intense speech can move them on. Um, I talked about the, the pragmatics and the syntax. You work with staff, you work um, on goals and objectives that are stated, you do the, the evaluations of students. The programs for speech pathology are offered at U of M, Michigan State, Calvin Western, and Grand Valley's is new. Within the last, I wanna say two years, they started up a speech path program. A school psychologist, it, most of my school psychologists have been um, people who like to analyze and look like to look at child development as a whole, um, how the brain is, how the brain works, um, examining behavior, cause and effect kind of things. Writing, they write a lot of reports. Their the writing comes with ease to them, and they're organized and efficient. The, if these are your strength, then the school psychologist might be an area. School psychologists don't often work um, directly with kids except for when they're testing them in the educational setting. They'll be testing, they test students um, to qualify for all the different um, certifications that are out there. One thing that comes to mind with my school psychs is they love that, um, the numbers, the data, we rely on our school sites to help us with the data, to make graphs, to, to fill in the Excel, to, sh that's our primary go-to person for that. I'm thinking of um, statistics, oh, but she likes those, and, and we need that role in there too, but if you like the, the numbers and you like that, and you still like to work with kids too, so, um, school psychology is a, is a good role to take on. It is um, three years beyond your undergraduate studies, and you do a three-year EDS program, and it's longer, if you, of course, if you decide to get your PhD. And um, you can do a specialization in, in, in the infant, zero to three, at MSU, is what my school psych was describing to me. Um, but you need to be a person who is, has good interpersonal skills, uh, diagnostic observation skills. We rely on our school psychologists a lot to do a lot of observing of classrooms for behavior because not only do we use the social worker for behavior, um, we use our psych for that too. And, and I do bring that up because it seems like in education now, the biggest challenge for in any area, in regular ed too, but special ed especially, is behavior. 
it runs behavior is a challenge in the autism classrooms behavior is a challenge in the CI classrooms um, behavior is a challenge with the severely impaired students and it's our job to figure out what that behavior is it's communication of some kind so staff um, staff very much have to keep up and know about behavior behavior development reasons for um, behavior it's something that those those years where you walked into a classroom and the kids were all really good and sad they just you have to look at kids differently these days and you can't expect that having patience and being able to look at behavior as communication what are they telling me in any student and any student will, will special education especially will help you be a better educator and you'll be able to be successful in your classrooms and then you use your team approach to help kind of work with those behaviors um, understanding child development and cognition willingness to work as a team those are all things that we require of our school psychologists they do spend a great deal of time testing and, and working on the diagnostics, trying to figure out what's going on with a student. But the roles can differ, develop, it depends on where you're at, and you are a, a working member of a team. Central and Michigan State are the two that work with the school psychology program. We have taken in, school psychologists is another area I have seen Grand Rapids as well as many other school districts seeking like they'll put an all call out there for we need a school psychologist um, you get you can find psychologists but it's different just a psychology degree or just having a degree as a psychologist is different than school psychology you can be a psychologist and work in the schools but the school psychologist certification helps with specific working with students it otherwise it takes you a while <laughs> another um, role if you are somebody who's athletic and strong, kind of hands-on, you can break tasks down into little steps. Um, you like people and working in a team, as all of these have required. You have some mechanical ability. You're curious or you might um, wonder how the muscles work or it might be something you're really interested in as far as um, how the body works. Um, you're interested in motor development then physical therapy is the area that you might consider here. There are two, two roles in physical therapy. There's the physical therapist and the physical therapist assistant. At the building I'm at, we have a full-time physical therapist assistant and the physical therapist visits from building to building to building. In smaller districts, most commonly those physical therapists visit from school to school. Kent ISD employs physical therapists that visit the local schools because the need is not as high. Grand Rapids employs physical therapists within them because we have the center programs within Grand Rapids. Um, a physical therapist will work with, and when I was talking to my physical therapist about this, I asked her to kind of give me a brief description of her job, and she calls her students patients, and I think um, it just goes to how you view. You have physical therapists in hospitals, in nursing homes. That degree is the same whether you're working in a school. So it does give you some flexibility if this is the um, area that you're interested in. Um, in the school setting, you'll work with infants to young adults because Pine Grove and Lincoln, they have students to age 26. So you get the whole scope of that. You will work in sometimes settings that you have a place or a mat or hallways to work. And other times, if you are a physical therapist and you're visiting a school to help work on strength of a child who has cerebral palsy, in a regular ed setting, you're not going to have the mat and the room. And the, you're going to have to make do and be creative in how to work on strength and coordination with a student in a regular setting like that. Um, a physical therapist requires the master's or doctorate degree and it's required also to that you take the state licensing exam. It's the physical therapist assistant is a two-year degree, an, asso an associate's degree from a community or technical school. 
You can also gain these from a four-year college or university in, in the two-year span. Um, the physical therapist assistant really assists the, the um, physical therapist with, when it comes to the evaluating of students um, and writing the goals and objectives for that student's individualized education plan, the physical therapist does that. The hands-on work then becomes the PTA, the physical therapist assistant. Um, he or she is the person who adjusts the equipment, who works on the wheelchairs if they're broken, who does the stretching activities for kids, who helps um, if there's a problem with how they're moving in their chair, who helps get motorized wheelchairs for kids who need them. Their, their scope of their job and their hands-on part is, is big. Um, mechanical, I mentioned, because they're always fixing something. A, you just don't replace the chairs anymore. They're very expensive. So you have to be creative many times with how to kind of jimmy rig a chair so a student is safe in the chair because once it's broken, insurance pay for it one time and that's it. So you, we're always or adapting as they grow until they can get a new one. Um, records patients' treatment, responses, instructs the families, works with the families and the, and the teachers in the classrooms with all of the physical management of equipment, of walking, of motor planning within their school day. Um, the PT does the specific uh, testing, setting down and doing a course of, course of action for the PTA, records also and checks on the, the patient or the student's progress. Um, the schools in Michigan, Andrews University Central, Grand Valley, Oakland, U of M, and Wayne State have the PT. The next one is if you're a person who you pay attention to details, you like working with your hands, hands-on again, um, you're organized and able to keep paperwork, you don't mind paperwork, you're able to work in a team and a good communicator, you can break larger tasks down to smaller ones as in the, with the physical therapy um, role, you're interested in child development. This one is an occupational therapist. On the same realm as physical therapist, there's an occupational therapist, and then there's a physical therapist aide, and there's a COTA, Certified Occupational Therapist Assistant. Same, they're linear, they're the same roles. The occupational therapist and her assistant work with the things that have to do with adult daily living skills, fine motor skills with the hands, the physical therapist is more the whole body, motor planning. Um, occupational therapist is visual perceptual. Um, in a regular ed setting, an occupational therapist or a CODA would work on handwriting, um, copying from a board. That's holding a pencil correctly. Those would be the, the kinds of things in a regular setting that an um, OT or a COTA would work on. In a specialized setting, like mine, they work on sensory integration, um, eating and drinking. Um, oh, what other kinds of things might they, they might work with hand strength, with kids who aren't going to write. You're working, you're looking at more vocational skills, sorting, being able to pick up little things so maybe they could get a job in a sheltered workshop. Um, visual motor, perceptual motor, which is you know, the actual working of your hands and watching it, knowing where you are in the space of a room, being able to walk in a room is motor planning, but having a perception of what's going on would be the occupational therapist's job. Range of motion, um, being able to reach way up high um, and having that total range of your body, they overlap a ton. My occupational therapist and my physical therapist work very closely together because their jobs very much overlap. In the educational setting, they do. Um, occupational therapist is a bachelor's. It's a five-year program with three 10-week field experiences, um, a licensing exam, and that you can. The, the person suggested, my OT suggested that some added degrees that would be helpful would be um, having a special ed degree first in early childhood. Grand Valley, Western, Eastern, and um, U of M work with the OT. And then the CODA 
is a two year associate's degree in here at GRCC and Baker. I, we have been trying to interview for a COTA or a CODA for, it'll be over a year. Um, and I'm, I just hired two new people fresh out of school. I, I have to be honest with you, the reason why we had trouble hiring is it seems that there are COTAs, COTAs out there. The pay isn't awesome. <laughs> For the schools, the pay is not awesome, but it's a great place to start. Um, my COTA that I had and loved left to go to Freebed because she, in all honesty, can make more work in part time at Mary Freebed than she can work in full time for Grand Rapids. But when you when you look at a place to start, a place to grow, and a beginning, an entry level. Um, and Grand Rapids is the one that hires most of the COTAs because, again, we, we have, Grand Rapids has all of the center programs in Kent County, and those programs require COTAs um, to help with this. So because they are a lower level paying job, um, they will employ more COTAs than they will occupational therapists. The occupational therapists will go from building to building to oversee the COTAs. Another role in there is adaptive PE. It's sort of like the physical therapist, um, but this one deals specifically with adapting physical, physical education classes within the regular environment to meet the needs of students that have physical impairments. Many of our students who have physical impairments are now out into the regular. We still have some classrooms with kids with all physical impairments in them, but most of them are out and scattered into their buildings. And the, the adaptive PE um, person would go around to those buildings and help the phys ed person adapt how they could. So if you have a student in a wheelchair with spina bifida, what does phys physical education look like for that student? What do they need? Um, it, it, is, it requires an undergrad degree in a K-12 PE program and then a master's in adaptive PE. There's a, an endorsement called an SP that you can get before your adaptive PE. It's 25 credits. Once you get those 25 credits, you have this SP endorsement. You can work for a school with that, but you have to continue to work towards your master's in adaptive PE. Um, we have about three of those, three or four of those in our district right now. Um, their roles are kind of ever-changing. We have them in the center programs. They help provide adaptive PE for the kids, and that looks differently. It's how to keep, how to have, that, have physical education and movement but most of the role of this person is to help the regular phys ed teacher adapt that class to kids who have physical or visual or hearing impairments. They are the adaptive PE programs at Western, Wayne State, and Grand Valley. My adaptive PE um, person said it would be best to get an undergrad and teaching degree, and then you apply it in the classroom at a gym, because you really are a teacher in a lot of the cases. Um, all of these, there's a lot of roles, and, it, and I think it depends on your strengths. Where do you see yourself? Where do you have a tremendous amount of patience? Um, you will, across the board, have to have patience. But if you find that you have this knack for understanding kids who tend to go off, then maybe an, um, seeking a certification in emotional impairments. If you, if you can take and have a ton of patience for kids and try to figure out why they can't get something, maybe in, one in learning disabilities. If you just love kids in general and you just really want to help special ed kids and you know there's a big range there, then maybe the cognitive impairments. But again, I can't stress enough that if you are really interested in special ed, get out into the building. You are always welcome at Pine Grove. As far as a center program, I will show you through, or you can. Um, volunteering is tough in those settings, in the severe centers, but I love to have people come and just be exposed and understand what's going on. But get out into the school districts where you live and see more than just the, you know, have a different eyes looking at the kids than when you were in high school and you looked at the special ed kids. 
go into your local schools with a different eye to see what you're looking for if you think special education is for you. If you um, are interested in some of the others, the speech path, the OT, the PT, go talk to somebody who, who fills that role in a school district before you decide where you want to go. But know that many of these roles, you can go either way. You could start in on a clinical setting or in a hospital setting, and you could go to an educational setting with some of them, speech path, occupational therapy, physical therapy, those are all social work, those are all degrees that don't, that aren't just education focused, but give you some flexibility. Does anybody have any questions that I haven't answered? No? Okay then. Thank you.